staying healthy, staying sexy, staying young is what living life is all about. And if you have doctors that have proven treatments that keep people young and healthy so they don't get sick, um, you want people to know about these treatments and that they exist. This episode is brought to you by Gainswave. Gainswave is a treatment done at your doctor's office to optimize erection quality without the need to Viagra, Cialis. It's non-surgical, there's no needles, and it has an amazing success rate. To find a Gainswave provider, go to gainswave.com. That's G-A-I-N-S-W-A-V-E.com. Hello, this is Mark L. White with Health Hacks, and I'm here with my good friend, Tony Orlando. Tony is the president of DEXA Plus, and um, if you are embarrassed about your body composition or you don't know about your body composition, you have to hear what Tony has to offer. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mark. It's great to be here. Uh, and, and thanks for coming down, by the way, from, um, where you, from Michigan, right? I'm from Michigan. The weather up there is a lot different than it is here and just beautiful sunny day. So we're, we're happy to be down in uh, beautiful Miami right now. Awesome. And t tell me a little bit. I mean, I know about DEXA because I've just been in the industry a long time. Um, and that's a machine I know that's been used for bone density, but you're doing something very different, very unique. Tell me about that. We really are. It's exciting. Um, I've worked with this technology for the last 20 years. And ironically, most people don't know what a DEXA is. So DEXA is dual energy x-ray. As you mentioned, uh, the original reason for DEXA technology to come out was to measure your bone health, uh, to see if you have osteoporosis and if you're at risk for a fracture. And the great thing is, is that osteoporosis is very treatable um, and we can help prevent fractures. But you know what's happened over the last several years is the advent of metabolic health features. So what we can do with the DEXA, and it's the three critical health markers that everybody should know, and that's my life mission at this point, is to get that awareness out there, uh, to educate consumers around three critical health markers are your bone health, your body composition, and your visceral fat. So, you know, why are these things important? And so for bone health, we can prevent fractures, which uh, can be catastrophic. Uh, people die as a result of a hip fracture literally every single day. Uh, two thirds of people that have osteoporosis have never been diagnosed. So if we don't diagnose, we can't treat. Uh -huh. So it's a big problem. And with women, one out of every two women will break a bone as a result of poor bone health. So it's just, it's off the charts. And then when we factor in body composition, so this is really kind of eye-opening information for people. So let me ask you this though, because I have a scale at home that I stand on it and sometimes it says 20%, sometimes it says 18%, sometimes it says 22%. How is DEXA different? Yeah. Well, DEXA is going to give you the accurate real number. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, one of our, uh, uh, my partners that works with me, and he's actually here today, uh, he measured himself on an in body, which is that impedance device. Okay. And it measured him at 8.5% body fat. Let, let's back up a second. Tell, what's the difference between when people hear impedance versus your technology? What's the difference? So uh, an impedance just sends electrical impulses through the body. A lot of those results are based on calculations. You can actually manipulate some of that data. So what it's going to do, it's going to give you a picture of what they think that your body composition is. Um, there are other forms of body composition testing. We've heard of skin calipers that will pinch the fat. Um, you can do underwater dunking, um, there's, which is called hydro hydrostatic. So there's a few different ways of measuring body composition, but the bottom line is that they'll measure it much differently than DEXA. And in some cases, we'll measure you much lower than what you actually are. So the question becomes, is it more hurtful to not know information or to get the wrong information that presents the wrong picture? So when it relates to some of these other devices, we had one of our employees did a side-by-side -side comparison where he measured himself on one of these bioelectrical impedance devices, and then the very next day he measured himself on DEXA. With impedance, he was 8.5% body fat. 
And with DEXA, he was 21% body fat. And so from this, that makes, that makes absolutely no sense though. It's, it doesn't, and it's, it can be very harmful. So somebody just to kind of understand what 8% body fat looks like, that's somebody that's extremely lean. Uh, That could be a bodybuilder getting ready to get on stage to compete. That's somebody that has super, super low body fat. Um, So some of this information by these other technologies can give you really the wrong picture of where you're at today. So the bioimpedance, they use electrical currents. I guess the water displacement, which um, some people have said that's also a very good one. Um, But what DEXA does, that's my understanding is it's an x-ray, correct? Exactly. Great question, by the way. So it's very low dose x-ray. It's not harmful. Um, there's a lot of ways you can compare the amount of radiation you get from DEXA. It could be one hour on a commercial airplane, a very short period of su- uh, time in the sun. We're exposed to radiation everywhere we go throughout our daily, daily life. But the bottom line with DEXA, it's very low dose radiation. And here's really the proof of that DEXA is the most accurate, is that if you get on the DEXA, it's going to give you a scanned weight. So what it's going to do, it's going to look at your bones, it's going to look at your lean tissue, and it's going to look at your fat. And it's going to look at it in detail, percentage of your body, it's going to look at it segmentally, I can look at my left arm versus my right arm. But it's going to give me, let's say I weigh 210 pounds, when I get on the DEXA, it's, there's no scale in the DEXA, but it's going to give me a scanned weight of right about 210 pounds. Wow. So it's measuring what it sees and it's giving you a weight. So it's extremely accurate. Um, So we can get all this great data uh, in just a few minutes. It's not harmful for people to get DEXA scans. We say that you should have it done four times throughout the year, once every three months as part of your normal health regimen. And really what's been the game changer with DEXA is the introduction of visceral fat measurement. Are you familiar with visceral fat, Mark? Somewhat. That's the fat that's inside our bodies that, I guess not all fats created equal, right? Exactly. So visceral fat is, it's the bad fat. It's toxic. It's the hidden fat that's wrapped around our organs. And when we have high amounts of visceral fat is we are at risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancer. So these are really severe health risks that are associated with visceral fat. Does the M-body also look at visceral fat or water displacement? So the N-body does typically, uh, the models do not measure visceral fat, where the DEXA is going to measure your visceral fat and do it in a way that's really close to what CT and MRI can do. So CT and MRI are the most accurate but there's no clinical application for a CT. Nobody's going to measure visceral fat or body fat with a CT. So clinically, DEXA is the most accurate way to measure visceral fat. So, so if somebody has a lot of visceral, well, first of all, what is normal amount for, I'm 50 years old, like what is optimal? What's normal? Where should I be concerned? Great question. Um, so there's two ways to measure visceral fat. One, we can do it by pounds. In another way is we can measure by area. So typically less than two pounds or less than 160 centimeters squared of visceral fat means that you're in the low risk or no risk category. Over two pounds or over 160 centimeters means that you have risk factors for all these diseases. And that's a great question when you say about a guy that's 50 years old, what's a normal amount of visceral fat for a 50 year old male And what we're seeing, and and what I did is years ago, is to prove the model uh, and to be able to implement a lot of the things I talked to doctors about across the country, is I started my own business uh, that does body comp, and we work with the DEX, and we do nutritional programming. So about four years ago, we started a company called Fit Body 360, mm-hmm. where we do all these things. And I could see the working model and perfect it and, and really have a lot of insight to how many people are affected with visceral fat. But when you talk about the 50-year-old guy, is that the incidence of visceral fat, is, it's extremely high. We probably see about 80% of men 
that are middle-aged that come in with high amounts of visceral fat that are over two pounds. Is the visceral fat hidden? And what I mean by that is, you know, do you ever see guys that on the outside, you're like, this guy has an, a great body. He's, you know, he's 20%, 18%, 16% body fat. But then when you measure him, he's got hidden fat he didn't even know about? 100%. So we see a lot of men that are lean, that look lean, now, they may not be in that 8% or 10% body fat category, mm -hmm. but a lot of men, it's very deceiving on what your body fat is. We have a lot of guys that come in that might think they're 15 or 20% body fat, and they're really 35% body fat. So we see an incidence of men that are lean. Um, I have an empl another employee that works with me. He's 6'4", 190 pounds, 31-year-old guy that by looking at him, he looks very lean. He's not overweight. He had four pounds of visceral fat. And we see these things every day. So there can be an instance where somebody that's lean and has maybe 20% body fat that has much higher visceral fat than an individual that could be maybe 80 pounds overweight and be 35 or 40% uh, vis uh, body fat. What I, I assume it's diet or is it genetics? Like what causes somebody to have visceral fat? Yeah, it's really a combination of things. And it really points to you need to be measured to know what your visceral fat is. You can't make an assumption. If I'm somebody that's lean and I have a normal BMI index, uh, it doesn't mean that I don't have high visceral fat. And it doesn't mean that I don't have high body fat either. So what, what contributes to having this high amounts of visceral fat? It's the way we eat. Uh, drinking contributes to it. It's our lifestyle. It's family history, there's genetic plays involved as well. So there's all these different things that comprise of going into having high amounts of visceral fat. So if somebody has high visceral fat, is the solution stop drinking and eat healthy? Yeah, that, that's lifestyle. What we're seeing is we're seeing these just dramatic transformations in very short periods of time. I had a, a guy that came in, he was exactly 50 years old. He works out at the gym that I work out at. Mm -hmm. He came in on day one, he was 34% body fat and four pounds of visceral fat. That's really typical. Uh, he wasn't severely overweight. He was probably 30 or 40 pounds overweight. Um, in four months, he reduced his body fat down to 20% body fat and less than one pounds of visceral fat. And that's purely from lifestyle. He was already working out every day and working out hard when he had high visceral fat, um, but he adopted lifestyle changes. And one of the things that we do that's very effective is macronutrient programming. It's a, it's a tool that you can keep for the rest of your life and gives you a great roadmap on how to improve your health. Is it the, is the solution, like if somebody's listening to this, but they haven't done their decks and they just want to be healthier, is it cutting out carbs? Is it cutting out red meat? Is there a special diet to keep visceral fat down? So a, a lot of people are really into plant-based diets right now. That's really popular. Um, Did you see that thing on, um, was it Netflix? Game Changers. Game Changers. What do what, awesome. what, what, what you think? So to me, it was really interesting because you, you see these very powerful, strong athletes that are completely plant-based and they have they just produced these, you know, they're just unbelievable, um, athletically fit and to not consume animal products to me was very eye-opening. But I think that, you know, so for us, we don't promote anything that's outside of macros. We don't recommend paleo or vegan or any of these things. And, and really, the most important thing you can do from a dietary standpoint, it's quality and quantity of food. So quality is we're eating things that are whole foods. We're eating uh, things that don't have a bunch of antibiotics and chemicals and, and modified. You know, that's number one is the quality and has, uh, you know, the nutrients that we need. And then number two is our macros. And that's how many calories we should eat a day and comprised of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And then everything else, you know, people can argue for days on what's better. You should be plant-based. You should be a meat eater. There's, you know, there's always conflicting sides what, of it. It's like arguing over politics. Exactly right. Exactly right. So, so, so people, they need to figure out 
diet and everybody has their own solutions. And I assume that you've done, how many decks is like, are you taking this information and compiling it and, and helping people make lifestyle choices? We really are. So like when, when our clients come into Fit Body, is like I said, that first DEXA scan is very eye-opening. They may have had another technology that measured them. They may never have been measured and just have an assumption. People assume what their health and fitness is. They, they really have no idea. And when you get that first DEXA scan, that's our starting point. And then from there, what do we do? And for us, it's really prescribing macronutrients. So we have great results. And people can, again, like you get that high amount of visceral fat and you're worried you're, you're at risk. It's a, it's a life-changing moment. Is what do I do to solve this? So in very short periods of time, we see unbelievable transformations. How about supplements or um, hormone replacement therapy? Does that help reduce visceral fat? I think it's, it's a combination of everything, all of the above, you know, so, um, and I know we're talking a lot about middle-aged men, uh, middle-aged women, younger people, everybody can benefit from all these things we're talking about. But, you know, if I have hormone deficiencies and I'm trying to build muscle, uh, if I'm consuming very, very small amounts of protein and I'm trying to build muscle, I'm going to struggle. So we really look at this thing in total everything you can do to have a healthy lifestyle. For some people, hormones are a great solution. There's people that are walking around with close to zero uh, on the testosterone. Um, you, know, uh, you know, there's different uh, opinions as far as what's optimal. Do we need to be at 1,000 or 800? Uh, but the bottom line is that there's people that are walking around with very, very low amounts of testosterone. And that's going to affect your ability to function. It's going to affect your libido. It's going to affect your energy. And for a lot of people, it's a really good solution, but along with lifestyle changes. Well, what's amazing is you've been doing this now 24 years. Yes. And when you started doing it, I remember like back in the day, there were these big clunky machines. I think GE used to make them a long time ago. And they were really focused on bone density. So how did you kind of come up with this idea of instead of targeting, you know, older people to see if they have weak bones, let's work on the wellness. Was that like, yeah. where did, where, how did that come about? That it's been an interesting journey and, and, and I'll never minimize the importance of bone health. It's, it's of huge importance and we need to be very preventive with this. And again, it's, you know, diagnose and treat. Uh, but with the metabolic health features, they came out several years ago and we started marketing uh, body comp and visceral fat to our doctors. And what we were finding is, is that the doctors that did buy the machine that were interested in doing this, they didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to implement it. So for us, it's really about bringing everything to the table for the doctors. So what we do is we actually market to consumers. We formed a, a website called dexaplus.com. Mm -hmm. It lists all of our providers that offer uh, DEXA services for both bone health and metabolic health and where consumers can find doctors uh, that offer these services in their area. But we bring the full solution, the how-to guide, how to implement DEXA into your practice, how to create a return on investment, and how to produce really positive patient outcomes to really transform people's lives. I, I would think also the value, if I'm a client and I am somebody who's into my health, Going to one of these providers, I would think these providers would also come up with actionable steps. Um, how often, like, do they do it and when do people see changes? Yeah. So, you know, really being a physician today is really tough, especially if you're an insurance-based physician. And a lot of the physicians out there are very fed up with diagnosing and treating sick people that don't need to be sick. So implementing services like DEXA and other cash-based services to keep people well, it's very appealing for the doctors because they can do what they, the reason they became a doctor was to help people. That's consistent. That's across the board. And there's days they feel very conflicted. If I'm a primary care doc and I'm seeing 50 patients a day and everything's insurance-based, I'm diagnosing and treating sick people that don't need to be sick. I'm prescribing blood pressure pills and treating patients with diabetes, they really don't have to have these diseases. So we help the doctors on how to implement programs 
that make changes. It's not just about doing a DEXA scan. It's what do we do with that DEXA scan? How do we build programs? And you mentioned HRT. That's a great example. You know, doing HRT along with lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. we're going to get maximum benefit and produce great outcomes for our clients. How, how often should somebody be doing a DEXA? Yeah, so we mm -hmm. recommend uh, that it's four times a year. And the reason we say that is it helps keep you on track. Getting it done once every three months uh, because we can have drastic changes in our body comp for good and for bad. There's times around the holidays that sometimes people go off the rails a little bit, but it holds you accountable. The, the accountability and then to be able to quantify where I'm at and that if I do go a little bit off track, I get my DEXA scan. Oh, you know what? My visceral fat increased a little bit. My body fat increased. I need to really kind of recommit to, to this journey. So, so I guess the technology, so when they get a DEXA and, um, you have, well, first, how long does it take for a patient to get a DEXA? It's a total of 10 minutes. Okay. The technology itself, does it track the patient? Does it, the technology give the patient actionable steps or is it up to the doctor to figure that all out? Yes. So, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it does track. So there are trending reports. When I come in and I get a DEXA scan, it's going to compare all my previous DEXA scans and it'll plot it on a graph. So I can have a nice visualization. If I've had 10 DEXA scans over the last three years, I can see every one of those DEXA scans plotted on a graph exactly to see how my body's been changing over the last three years. Okay. And again, this isn't something that a person can't buy and just put in their house. This is always done at a doctor's office. Um, it's like top of the line. I, how does it compare to like the, I've heard water displacement and DEXA as mm -hmm. the gold standards. So I think that when you, you talk about the hydrostatic, the water displacement, it really boils down to convenience. Um, most people do not want to go into a facility and be immersed in water. Um, and then from the standpoint of the accuracy and precision and the especially, amount. Especially if they don't clean the water out. Exactly. So it, it's not a practical application. I think that's number one. You're seeing that, that, that technology is really dying. There's less facilities offering that. There's very, very few across the country. And then from the standpoint of the information and the precision we get from DEXA, it's really unparalleled. So, so it's really DEXA has made water displacement obsolete. I think that DEXA has made all forms of body comp uh, testing less valuable. Um, I, I hate to say obsolete. Uh, some people may see some small value in skin calipers where maybe gives us a general idea of where we're at, but it's not going to produce the accuracy. And, and you mentioned about offering DEXA in a medical facility, it does need to be under the supervision of a medical director, mm -hmm. but we're seeing a lot of growth in health and fitness, uh, high-end fitness facilities. It's making its way into kind of the non-traditional medicine practices, but always under a medical doctor's supervision. I, I would think you'd have to look at what professional sports teams are doing to figure out if this is cutting edge or not. Do you work with any athletes, any professional sports organizations? We, we do, and we have for several years. So, um, you know, originally, and another technology that came out many years ago was something called the Bod Pod. Have you heard of that before? Yes, I have. Okay. So, when they first introduced themselves to the United States here, uh, they went to all the NFL combines and they had the Bod Pod there. It's this little egg shaped device that you have these massive people have to step into. So, if you're claustrophobic, you don't want to get into a Bod Pod. And it, there's accuracy issues with it, but that was the introduction of body comp to pro professional sports teams, specifically in the NFL. And what's happened over the last several years, a lot of these NFL teams have converted to DEXA. So I've worked with uh, every professional uh, sports organization, NFL, NBA has purchased from us, uh, MLS is purchasing DEXAs, uh, the UFC uh, put in a DEXA at their training facility out in Las Vegas. So professional sports, it's becoming more and more recognizable as the gold standard. But again, most consumers, even people that are into fitness, probably 90% of them if, don't even know what a DEXA is. That's amazing. So if I'm a consumer listening to this, I go to the website, which is DEXAplus.com? Yep, DEXAplus, so D-E-X-A-plus.com. 
And is that the plus sign or is that spelled P-L-U-S? Uh, spelled out P-L-U-S. Okay. Are there places all over the country or there? There are. Um, so we just did the initial launch. We loaded in uh, 600 yeah. customers, providers that offer DEXA services. So in just about every area that you're in, uh, there'll be a DEXA provider in uh, very close proximity to where you're at. And roughly, I, I would assume geography um, notwithstanding, roughly what should a person pay? Does it, is it covered by insurance? Is it private pay? What's the payment? It's a great question. So the average price for a full body DEXA, which will give your body comp, your visceral fat, and your bone health, is anywhere from about $99 to $149 <laughs> for a DEXA scan. Well, that's actually, you know, it's funny. I saw in somebody trying to market in body for about that same price. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is somebody can get DEXA much better um, information for about the same price. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing. Well, Tony, I'm so happy that you came down to visit us. I, I hope you're enjoying our weather. We, we are. It's uh, great to be down in sunny uh, Miami. And we appreciate the hospitality of being here with you guys. Thank you, Tony Orlando. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Yeah.